What's the word, y'all? Hopefully, this is a one take. Damian Lillard requested a trade. I, before we even talk about that, I just want us NBA fans to eternalize how ridiculous this league really is. Of course, the individual play of basketball is so supreme. But the other stuff, the off-course stuff, is what puts everything together to make it the best league in the world. In the last year, again, this is off top of head. I might be forgetting some stuff. But I just, wanna, I just want you to internalize how crazy movement has been in the NBA over the last just 365 days. Kevin Durant. Kyrie Irving, James Harden just requested another trade 48 hours ago. We're about to see, um, we're about to see Damian Lillard. We, oh, wait, 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 wait. The Portland Trailblazers have been informed that Damian Lillard wants to trade specifically to the Eastern Conference champion Miami Heat. <laughs> uh, we also saw Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, and Chris Paul, and, and it's just, it's just a lot of stuff going on, man. It's just a lot of stuff going on, and this is why I love it. Again, I can understand the people that don't like this type of player movement, but as a content creator, <laughs> baby, we got bills to pay, and that's what we're doing right here, right now. Okay, so Dame officially requested the trade. Uh, I've mentioned here on this channel over the last couple months that I refuse to talk about Dame rumors or Dame trade destinations until either him or the Trailblazers decide that the relationship has ended, and it, it happened today. And I made a tweet yesterday, and again, I made the same exact tweet today when I woke up because the Miami Heat have been real quiet. They lost Gabe Vincent to the Lakers, good pickup for the Lakers. We thought that Max Struess just straight up signed to the to the uh, Cavaliers and then turned out to be a three-team trade. And then in that three-team three trade, they just got a second-round pick in exchange instead of getting like a Jetty Osmond, instead of getting a Lamar Stevens, instead of getting whatever, whatever. And I'm, I'm in here on some Brian Windhorst stuff. There must be things going on. They must know something that we do not. And, and you know who knew? The dropping dimes dude. Who is he? Who is broke? Uh, Damian Lillard is probably going to end up on the Miami Heat. And this is where things get real iffy because obviously Damian Lillard is the best player in Trailblazer history or second best depending on who you ask. I'm saying he's the best. Shout out to Clyde Drexler, but I'm saying he's the best player in franchise history. He's also under contract for, for a couple years. If I am the Trailblazers... Do, do I need to send him to his preferred destination? Are we doing it simply because Dame has, you know, been so loyal to the city? Or should I be thinking about my organization first? Should I be thinking about my organization first? Now, again, I do believe that he's going to end up on the Miami Heat. Only time will tell. And I feel like as soon as I'm done uh, filming this video, the trade is going to happen. It feels like he's going to go to the Miami Heat. It's going to be like Hero. It's going to... It's going to be some stuff. They What do they have? They have the 2028 20, first round pick and 2030 first round pick. I'm just thinking about Damian Lillard as good as he is. As he just came off basically the best year of his NBA career, and that's saying a lot considering how good Dame has been. The market for Dame isn't as lucrative as you want it to be. Because if we take a look at if we take a look at teams across the league, first of all, Dame is telling you himself that he wants to go to this team again. It's up to you whether or not you want to abide by that. If we take a look around the league, the teams that would be interested in Dame. Uh, a year ago don't really have the same interest and as of right now it is the Miami Heat and potentially the Brooklyn Nets because the Nets have all the picks and again Damian Lillard said a couple months ago that Brooklyn would be a place because he's with Mikhail like this and of course Dame is with Bam like this and if the Miami Heat end up turning Tyler Hero who didn't play in that playoff run Gabe Vincent who was good but also shot 30% in the finals from three or whatever and Max Struess, one of them shot 30% from three. I, don't, I think it might have been Max Struess shooting 31% from three in the finals. If they turn that into Dame, I know you got a lot of other roster spots that you got to fill, but I mean, absolute, absolute win. Uh, the rich keep getting richer. This is this is what I was skeptical about all of this because about a week, you know, the rumors of Dame have been going for as long as the, the offseason has been going, right? And Joe Cronin had a meeting with Damian Lillard, apparently, and he had a press conference after. He said, we are still dedicated to build around Damian Lillard and build a contender here. There was no conversation from Damian Lillard himself, right? It was Joe Cronin who's in charge over there saying that he met with Dame and, and he feels like that they can build a contender around him. And, and Dame was like, all right, whatever. Let's see if free agency is about. And uh, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, the Heat, the Clippers, and the 76ers are three teams that that will have interest in exploring Damian Lillard. The Blazers are expected to value deals that bring their back young players and draft assets. That's big. I, I, I'm, I know I'm all over the place. The so one take and things are breaking as we speak. The fact that they're valuing young players and draft capital, that also tells me that they're not really caring about exactly what Dame is thinking. Dame said, I want to go to the Heat. They say, all right, but we're going to listen to these other offers too. 
Um, the thing is about these three teams, they don't have a bunch of draft capital. None of these three teams have a bunch of draft capital. The young asset for the Heat is, of course, Tyler Hero. The young asset for the Clippers, they don't really have one. Terrence Mann is, is 27. You know what I'm saying? And the 76ers young asset is Tyrese Maxey. Are they, are they throwing Tyrese Maxey into a trade with a couple first-round picks and then flipping James Harden to the Clippers for Robert, Robert Covington coming back or whatever? The 76ers could look a lot different, but it's not just the Miami. Okay, cool. Taking a step back, going to free agency, right? Dave said, hey, I'm going to see exactly what y'all thinking. I'm going to see exactly what y'all do. And what did they do early yesterday morning? They released Trent Wofford. I bet now that they know that Dave requested a trade, they wish they still had Trent Wofford on the roster because he's 22 years old and he was making $1.8 million. And then they gave Jeremy Grant the biggest deal of, of the offseason so far, which is a five-year, $160 million contract. Dave was like, I messed with Jeremy. But that ain't it. <laughs> I mess with, I mess with Jeremy. But that ain't the deal that's gonna put us into contention. So you know what? I'm gonna chuck up my deuces and I'm moving on to my next team. Uh, but okay, so now we have we know there are three teams interested. And in, in this from Woj, we do not see the Brooklyn Nets. Now the Brooklyn Nets also did make a deal. They gave Cam Johnson four years, 188. Not 180, 108 million dollars was about 27 million dollars annually, which is a pretty solid contract for for Cam. Shout out to him and his fam. Um, but it doesn't seem like they're they're interested, or may, maybe they am. I guess I guess we do not know. Uh, but they're not one of the three teams that Wolves just announced, and I can see why they wouldn't be. Um, they don't have their own first round pick this season, so that is a reason for them to go out there and just say, hey, let's go get one of the greatest players in the league. Um, and they also got all of these these picks from the the trades that they could be interested but they're not in the three they're not in the three i think again that that we're going to look back on whatever trade and the trailblazers are probably going to be kicking themselves a little bit that they didn't make this trade last season but then you get the butterfly effect the domino effect if they trade damian Lillard last season then maybe they don't end up with the draft odds that jumped up to get school henderson you know what i'm saying so like but like with, with this being three teams maybe four teams being the brooklyn nets being interested, none of those teams have like the mega package that you want. He's not, he wasn't gonna get a, a Kevin Durant type package, right? You also don't want to settle for a Kyrie Irving type package, you know? You, you want to get something in the the Donovan Mitchell where you get the draft capital, but you also get the Larry Marketing, whoever that may be. And the teams that are interested right now that would be looking for Dame have already made big time deals to get rid of a bunch of draft picks. Hey, we brought in Paul George. We gave him 100 first round picks and some swaps. Oh, we brought in James Harden. We threw Ben Simmons in some picks. We who was the other team? The Miami Heat are just a team that make deals. <laughs> they just they just do. And again, with them sitting on their hands for the first 24 hours of free AT, I knew I knew the Heat were up to something, and they're they're gonna try their hardest. To really get in on this because they missed on Bradley Beal. There are some rumors that they weren't even really interested in Bradley Beal. But obviously, the idea of Bam and Jimmy Butler being this, this duo with the role players around them can get them to a point where they can be in the finals. But we saw that offense in the play on the final specifically be so stagnant because Jimmy's dealing with an injury, but just not playing up to itself. They needed another get go, go getter. It's not that many uh, go getters better than Damian Lillard. Oh, boy. Um, so the Portland Trailblazers, I mean, I think that they could walk out of this, whatever the trade is going to be, and still feel really good because Scoot Henderson is really a dog. Shane Sharp showed us a lot last season that he's going to be a dog. They already have a nice young core right now. And I, I'm not even counting Anthony Sibes because I don't know exactly what's going to go on with him because he's making $20 million in the next couple of seasons. But he is another young player that is good. The real thing is now Now you already signed Jeremy Grant to a five-year, $160 million deal. And though there's no such thing as an untradeable contract, that is a ton. That is a ton of money. I'm looking at there's another EuroLeague player coming over to the league, going to the Thunder. Three years, uh, uh, $23 million. All right. Um, that is a ton of money to, to be moved. And I think a lot of people are going to look at Jeremy Grant making $32 million annually for five years when he's already 29 and be like, that's a rough deal for us to make. So Jeremy, Nurk, these guys that are there right now, they might be there for a little bit. Um, the Sixers have no interest in throwing Tyrese Maxey into a Damian Lillard trade. Things are going to continue to break over the next 24 hours or so. When the deal happens, you know where I'm going to be. Let me know what you think. Dame has officially, officially requested a trade. The, tra the Trailblazer, man. Jeremy Grant got all of that money just for Dame to say I'm out. 
It's crazy. 